Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and this is Scrooge from Neutral Labs. If you are a regular viewer to the channel, you might recognize Neutral Labs from the Elmira 2, which is a drone synth with a kind of mostly digital architecture, but with some analog dirt on the end, um, clearly influenced by the uh, Lyra 8 in some ways, but really quite its own thing that I got a lot of enjoyment out of uh, when I got my hands on it uh, a couple of years ago. And um, so when Martin from Neutral Labs got in touch to say that he had a drum machine in the works and would I like to take a look, uh, I said, yes, please, absolutely. And then as I learned more about it, uh, I got even more excited. So yeah, I'm really, really uh, excited to be able to show uh, this instrument off on the channel. So yes, before we go any further, in the interest of transparency, I got this um, pre-production unit um, for free um, for me to take a look at, and if I liked it, I could keep it and make a video on it. I do like it, and here I am making the video. So um, no money has changed hands, but I have got this for free, so uh, important for me to disclose that before we go any further. So I don't intend for this video to be a review as such. What I want to do is give you a flavour for what the Scrooge sounds like and, and also what it is like to work with, because although there's kind of a user interface here that's somewhat familiar, you know, kind of looks like a step sequencer, doesn't it? And, and it is, but it's not the normal way that you kind of interact with a drum machine. And it raises these interesting um, synergies between sequencing and synthesis that I think are really, really interesting and worth digging into. So the bulk of this video, I think we're going to make a beat from scratch, but there are some conceptual things about this instrument that we need to address first for all of that to kind of make sense. Before we dive in too far, let's start with some sort of vital statistics just to give people a flavour of what's going on here. So yes, this is a drum machine. It has five voices. One, two, three, four, five. You've got the volumes for those voices on the faders here. Um, there is a up to 64 step sequencer and each of the uh, tracks can have a different length so you can do polymetric things. The sequencer's also got a kind of parameter lock type of workflow. If you've worked with electron devices previously, a lot of this will feel kind of familiar, although there are some differences. Uh, there are individual outs for each of the voices and then two main outputs and then you have a switch for each of the channels where you can send it to one of the main outputs or neither if you want to mute it in that main output. So you can do kind of grouping and bussing and then also have individual outs as well. It's actually really, really flexible in that way and that's going to be really useful when I come to actually making the um, beat itself. You can synchronize externally with analog clock signals. You can also synchronize using uh, MIDI. Uh, what else? Uh, there's an external um, sequencer output as well. So you can take everything that the sequencer usually does and use it to sequence other um, gear, typically analog gear. We'll get to why that is. Uh, there are also, um, and we'll dig into this a bit more, uh, two mod tracks, which are um, separate sequencer tracks that you can then sort of overlay on top of the other tracks to do other sort of modulations. You can use them in various different ways. We'll, we'll take a look at what you can do with that. Oh, and although um, song mode is rarely of interest to me, uh, there is no song mode on the Scrooge, although you do get pattern chaining. Uh, I think that's probably most of, of everything. So before we go any further and we start to build a beat, there are some ideas that we need to get sort of sorted in our minds on a kind of conceptual level to make everything else make sense. So I'm going to do something that's a bit weird if you're going to try and demo a piece of gear. That's, I'm going to unplug it. 
So there goes the power. Now, clearly, uh, I've lost my mind because how am I going to demo this synth without any power going to it? Well, the core of the Scrooge is that the five tracks that make the sounds are actually passive circuits. That's to say that they're not powered by the main device. There are no VCAs or filters to move around. Rather, there are circuits based on a combination of um, CMOS logic chips and some analog components. And the way that they make sound is actually by control voltage. The sequencer, if it was powered, which it's not at the moment, is spitting out control voltage, not uh, triggers, if you like. So even with this unplugged, we can make it make sounds by sending in control voltage to these poke inputs, one for each of the five tracks, and we'll hear the output on the voice outputs. Now I'm going to use my modular for this, my Euromac, to be really, really clear. You do not need modular to use this uh, drum machine. I'm only using it as a voltage source, although I will mention that you can take this out of its little box and stick it into your rack if you have a rack that's big enough. Personally, I prefer to keep it standalone. So if I reach across here and just turn up uh, the voltage that's going to this poke input, which is going to this first channel here, we should hear. Some sounds. Now, if I was to put a envelope in there instead, we can hear it start to make sound. There are Two controls which, um, other than the volume, uh, which affect other aspects of the circuitry which will make it do different things. And each of these five voices are tuned to do different types of sounds. So that first one is ostensibly where you get sort of bass drums, although you can also get sort of other bass sounds, toms. So we've got kind of sort of snary things happening in that next one. Moving across. Noisy. Sometimes metallic. Symbol type things. And this is, I guess, sort of... Tom World? But also kind of crunchy snares and kicks. And this last one is mostly tonal. I like this one more with sort of static uh, voltages often. There's a nice little sample and hold going to it. But yeah, all of these sounds are happening without any power going to Scrooge. These circuits are only being woken up, if you like, by the control voltage. And that idea will then speak to you how the sequencer, when it's powered, actually works. So, uh, let's maybe plug it back in and see what we can do with it. So there are a couple of things to address just before we uh, jump into the beat making, um, just to set the scene. First of all, this is a pre-production uh, model. It's not the final version. There are a couple of differences between this and the final version. Off the top of my head, uh, the first channel on the final version has a slight bass boost to it. This is kind of the kick drummy um, channel, so that's kind of welcome. 
um, in some settings when it's powered, uh, there is uh, a noise that bleeds through when the um, sequencer isn't running on this. It's not doing it at the moment, actually, uh, but that's fixed on the final version. And also, this is not, I don't think, running the very final firmware, but it's the firmware's been fine, and I think it's pretty much feature complete for the, like, the version 1. Uh, the next thing, uh, I'm going to be using the Octrack, which is just off to the side here, as a mixer and effects unit uh, during the demo, um, just so I can pan things around and sort of add a bit of reverb and delay where it feels like that's going to be the vibe. I'm not going to overdo it um, too much. Oh, there's also um, some EQ that I can bring in if I want a bit of a bass boost or a bit of a treble lift in here as well, uh, but I'll make it really obvious when I am doing that. And finally, there is a feature of uh, the sequencer uh, that I'm going to be using a lot uh, during this video, because um, it's kind of part of my workflow with this instrument, uh, but it's easier to explain it on a more sort of finished beat before we sort of jump into uh, using it um, to build something from scratch. Uh, so let's just introduce the control all function here. Uh, so control all, I'll just get this uh, pattern running. So the control functionality is kind of like the control functionality on electrons in that when we uh, enable it and change one of the parameters here, it's going to change for all of the tracks. Now it works a little bit differently from uh, the electron uh, control all because the changes that we made now are kind of held in a buffer. So I can actually turn control all off and when I bring it back in, it's kind of the, the setup that we just set up. And we can kind of sort of switch that in and out. <laughs> it's a cool sound. Um, yeah. Now, um, if we want to take what we've just done there, what we've just changed, uh, we can actually hold control all and we've got a button here called control commit, which will actually take those changes and sort of bake them into the sequence. And we're going to do that because that was a crazy setup that we just had. And then alongside this, we also have control reset, which sort of removes all of the changes that we've made to the basic um, sequence and we can start doing different uh, control changes instead. Yeah, so it's a really, really useful sort of performance control, but it's also really useful when it comes to uh, sort of doing your initial sound design. Uh, and one um, really cool feature of the control that we have here, I'll just reset the control, is that with control all uh, turned on, if you hold down shift, you can choose which of the five tracks are going to be controlled by the control or actually going to be uh, more than five tracks because you can also control the external and mod tracks. So, uh, but yeah, you can turn on and off the different um, tracks to be control alled if you like. So for example, if we wanted like the hi-hat and the snare sound to be controlled but not the kick drum, so things sort of keep going along with the kick drum, we could do that. So our kick drum is still sort of keeping pace there while everything else is going crazy. I'll explain what all of these parameters are in just a second. Yeah. Uh, and the reason that um, I find it really useful to have the control here, um, one shortcut is if you hold shift and tap uh, control to turn it on, it's going to set it to whichever track you're currently editing. And then you can kind of use it as sort of sound design and then commit it at the end. And that's what I'm going to be doing uh, for a lot of um, uh, this pattern that we're going to build now. Okay, so that's control all. Let's load a blank pattern. Yeah, that's a blank pattern. And uh, let's build something from scratch. So let's select the first track. Uh, it already is. Um, hold down shift and you can choose the different tracks here. I want voice one. And I will just pop down some steps. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. So let's talk about how Scrooge has this synergy, this interaction between the voices and the sequencer. Because it's quite fascinating. So let's talk about the controls up here just briefly. So we have a volume control, which is a volume control. This also affects the output on the per voice um, output instantly. 
Um, come back to these in just a second. We have a toggle switch here, which uh, chooses which outputs um, this voice is going to. So at the moment it's to the left, so it's going out of the A output and also out of its individual output. In the center, it's only going to go out of its individual output, which isn't plugged in, so we're not hearing anything. And then uh, over here to the right, it's going out of the B output and its individual output, uh, which is panned off to one side. We'll bring it back across to the A output. The XY toggle here will send in the X and Y sequences mixed in with the um, sequence that is for this track, um, which we will come back to. These two knobs reconfigure the circuit somehow. It's different on every single uh, voice. but it changes the behavior of the circuit. It also crucially changes how it reacts to incoming voltage, um, which is why we need to come down to the sequencer and talk about it some more, because the sequencer is what is powering the circuit, and the circuit only makes sound when it's being powered, so what's going on in the sequencer on each of these steps and it's important to think of these as steps and not triggers because they are so more than just triggers in fact if they were just triggers they wouldn't actually power it for long enough to make it make a sound um so changing what these steps are doing voltage wise is going to change the sound as much as or more than changing these knobs so there are six parameters that you have to play with in the sequencer and each of those can be locked per step and i'm going to be doing a lot of locking per step as we go forwards uh, but i want to show you a potential workflow for like setting up the initial sound of the steps and we can do that using the control all so i'm going to hold shift and tap control to turn it on and that will just enable control all just for the track you're currently on you can do it manually as well by holding down shift as i showed but that's just a shortcut that's in there, which is nice. So we then have control over the six parameters on these three knobs. Um, one parameter each with shift turned off and one parameter each with shift turned on. So this first knob here uh, with shift turned off is going to affect the length of the steps. And again, you can set these per step as well, um, which we will be doing. And you can hear that actually given the circuit power for longer does change its sound as well as its length. Also how they overlap is really interesting. And you can hear how much effect these controls then have over how the steps interact with it. So uh, this next control here is going to alter the voltage of the step. And depending how you have things configured, you might barely get any sound below about halfway. It might be choked out altogether. And more is not always more, right? We're actually sort of overloading and saturating the circuit <laughs> up at the top here with the voltage set to max yeah really interactive with these settings here this next control here affects the um, envelope. So in the middle it's just a gate. To the right we're going to have a decay envelope on the voltage. Which gets you sort of close to that sort of traditional drum decay. Again that initial voltage is going to have a massive effect on things as well. 
Over to the left, it's an attack instead. And it so, so it's sort of super cool, sort of um, reverse sounds. Really, really fun on control or across all of the steps, all of the tracks all at once. Yeah, so with shift turned on, uh, you then have a, a, another set of controls. So on this first one here, you have a ratchet. Now this is going to sound different and better on other tracks, I think. Uh, like these slow stages, but it goes up into audio rate pretty quickly. And you can use it to sort of do tonal things. Which is fun. Uh, this knob here is going to act as a probability, so full probability is full for the steps that we're editing, which is all of them at the moment, as we turn it down. Don't tend to use this, well, maybe I use it a bit during the sort of sound design stages, but certainly in terms of getting variations out of patterns, this is um, key. Uh, as it is unlike the electrons as well. This last control here introduces kind of uh, a chaotic um, fluctuation in the voltage within the actual step at different frequencies and intensities. So low it kind of gives you the sort of noise vibe, sort of tonal noise kind of thing. As we go higher, it gets into sort of like pseudo FM kind of things. Sort of metallic. Oh, yeah. That's really, really cool. <laughs> Completely filthy. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, there's loads of cool places in here. It's actually super key to getting different styles of sounds out of the different channels. Yeah. And when you've kind of got yourself to a place where you're sort of happy with the overall sound, um, as I mentioned before, control was like, like a buffer. Uh, we can commit what we've got there. So we can hold down funk, which is also the control or button, and do control commit, and that basically applies those changes to those steps. So if we come out of control all, it's still in there. You can also um, reset that now so we don't accidentally apply that to something else. As I mentioned, um, all of this stuff can be done sort of per step as well. So um, perhaps you want to do... Oh, whoop, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, perhaps we want to have one here, which um, has like an inverted inverted envelope. But perhaps we don't want it every single time, so we could lower its probability approximately half of the time. It's happening every single time now, of course. There we go. No, it is probability. And perhaps you want... Perhaps you want one with that FM thing going on.
tricky one here. Yeah, rather. Probability. Maybe this one here can have a lower voltage. Maybe a little clicky one here. Time so we can lower the probability on that one. This first channel is super flexible. It's probably of the five voices my favorite. Like, if this was the whole synth and kind of like a monophonic kind of defam thing, I think that would be really sick anyway. But <laughs> we've got these other channels to look at, which we should definitely get to. Just want to get a little bit more variation in here. FME one. I feel like that's kind of the way we're going now. Uh, reverb on the old old track. another track and see what we're going to put down on there. This is probably just backbeat I reckon. So this is track 2 here now. I do shift control also we can set the basic parameters here, make it longer. This channel I think really likes it where you give it the ratchets. Give it that uh, decay envelope there. So let's give it some of that FM because this channel really um, responds well to that. Yeah. There we go. I say FM. Random variation. Maybe have this last one with a reverse envelope. Oops. Did control all. Remember to turn off control all first. Uh, so let's just commit that. Set it, turn it off, get this one. Make it shorter. Needs to be on that stuff, I think.
sec. Yep, I'll have that. Maybe lowest probability though. as well. Uh, that's fine. Track three. It's kind of a hi hatty kind of place, so let's... Um so again, we're going to control all and start to have a different um, length um, so we can set the um, length of the track here to maybe like a uh, six so this kind of does toms and stuff but other stuff as well Lower the 
watching that one. Uh, this last one here. They can do lots of different things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of <laughs> ratchets itself in some. It kind of like, hangs on to voltage for quite a long time. It absolutely depends on how you configure it as well. with this one. So if we commit that now and change the voltage to some of these. We need to talk about the X and Y sequences because there's some more magic we can do. So the X and Y tracks are fundamentally the same as all the other tracks. They have all of the same features. You sequence them in the same way. You select them in the same way. However, they don't, by default, go anywhere. So their voltages aren't sent anywhere. Now you have outputs for them here, so you can tap them and send them. To external gear you also have an entire external um, track as well which is designed for that as well but their real sort of use is to mix into the other tracks by way of sending them in these switches so let's just start the sequence again and I'll maybe just bring things down so, um, if I have the X track being sent to uh, my kick drum here, and I stick a voltage down, you can hear now that that's... ...interfering with the other stuff that's in there, right? It's not overriding what's in there, it's been mixed in. So where I think this becomes really, really interesting is when you have these tracks in a different meter to the track that you're sending it to. So for example, I could change the um, length of this track to say, um, say five. And now what I'm 
sending in there is sort of doing a polymetric thing over the top of the other stuff that's in there. Now, it's not a polymetric thing that sounds very good at the moment. Let's try and make it do something a bit more interesting. So I think lower its voltage. Make it slightly longer. Give it decay. You can hear now if we take out the X from this track, we've lost that little bit of extra variation. But that's really cool because we can choose to bring it in during a performance. to the mod Y here and have another one set up at a different odd meter. Just store this by the way. Lovely. Um, let's see what this sounds like if we put a couple of steps on it. Send it here. So we can start to introduce other variations in there. Boost. 
also, uh, yeah, one side effect of the way that Scrooge works is that those ratchets and uh, random sounds are tied to the tempo of the device. So you get these pitch shifts as you turn things down. Which may or may not be cool, but it's pretty cool this time. So there is a bunch of other stuff that we could talk about, but this isn't intending to be a full demo of everything, so what haven't we touched on that's worth talking about? Um, you can introduce Slew into the sequence if you uh, wish. Um, uh, there's also a pattern randomizer which either does full randomization or sort of incremental randomization depending on how you have it set up. Uh, I've mentioned it, but it's worth Repeating again, we do have an external output here as well. Uh, which you can use to sequence anything else with this um, sequencer. And you have the mod outputs, which you could also use as external outputs as well if you weren't using them inside of your uh, sequence. worth um, comparing this to some other things that are out there. Obviously, uh, sequencer-wise, there's a lot um, influenced here from electron devices, but that's not really the place where this is operating. There are two, two instruments which come to mind that are sort of in the same vein as this, um, in terms of the sound generation being sort of based on passive circuits. The first would be the uh, Noom from uh, Landscape, which is an incredibly aesthetic looking thing. It sounds really good. It's got, I think, eight channels rather than the five voices here, and those voices can interact with each other. Um, the other one that I can think of is probably the passive operator from Error Instruments, which is only a single voice, but is um, very patchable, a lot more inputs for messing around with the circuits. The difference with both of those and Scrooge, of course, is that they don't have a built-in sequencer, so you have to use uh, an external sequencer. Um, generally, we're talking sort of Eurorack, although you can maybe use something like an SQ1, although it's probably not really powerful enough to sort of get the full uh, strength from them. I actually think that the passive operator would be a really good um, additional channel for the Scrooge using the external and X and Y outputs. I think that'd be a really, really neat um, addition if you had one of these and you wanted a sixth um, a channel. But the real strength of the Scrooge is the sequencer, right? Because the the sounds are so tied to the voltages going into the circuitry, having a sequencer that is sort of featured this way is what makes the whole thing so compelling and why I've been really enjoying my time with it. Is this for everyone? No, uh, unequivocally not. Same with the Elmira, right? You know, the Elmira is a niche instrument and although I think the Scrooge has a wider general appeal, it's still extremely niche uh, in terms of the sounds it makes. Um, not everyone's going to get down to these sort of glitchy, lo-fi, crunchy, broken sounds. Personally, I love it. <laughs> um, I'm so, so inspired by this drum machine. I've been really, really enjoying it. Anyway, I 
think that's everything I want to say. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it ended up being probably a bit longer than I intended just because I got lost in this instrument. As I say, I find it really inspiring. I, I think the sounds are really interesting. I think the workflow is um, so neat and that synergy between the sequencer and the the sounds themselves is just really, really fun to explore. If you did enjoy the video, um, as always, a like is massively appreciated. It really helps out. And um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, then why not click that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel? That's what that button does. If you have any questions about the Scrooge, um, you can leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I would point out that the manual is really well written. Um, I think that uh, Neutral Labs do really, really good manuals. They walk the line between being technical and conversational really nicely. Uh, but yeah, if you have any specific questions that you think I can answer, then as always, just drop them in the comments and I'll do my very, very best. But other than that, I think that's everything. So um, until next time, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>